Hello, everybody. How was everybody today? So we just got the news that Riley Strain's remains, a body has been found. So we're going to wait for a bunch to get in here. I'm going to uh, pull up the latest on here. They are going to have a news conference. Well, let's just let's just get this up. Okay, so I was just scrolling through my YouTube, answering questions and stuff when this popped up. Good morning, Nana. It is. It's heartbreaking. Dasya do. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Okay, so we're going to jump right to this. Let me get the, sh the screen shared here and the audio. Okay, and once this starts, let me go full screen with this, you guys. Once it starts, look, put a one in the chat, please. Yes, he has been found. There's Juror 11. Good morning. Okay, so let's play this, you guys. Then we'll have a little discussion about it because I do still think that there's a lot of weird stuff going on here. So once it starts, please put a one in the chat if you can hear it. I'm going to crank the volume right up on it and let's listen. Come on. Okay, hang on a sec, you guys. I don't know why this. Okay, let me just pause it. Hang on. And it's just share the whole window, entire screen. And here. Okay. Okay. News two. We're following breaking news right now. We can confirm the body of 22 year old Riley Strain has now been recovered here in Nashville. We're expecting a press conference from officials right now. We do believe they're there getting set uh, on the ground. We're anticipating to hear from Metro Police. Let's listen in and, and see what they can say about the case. Nashville Police Department will be speaking with you. Chief Drake. Thank you, Don. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, this morning around 7.28 a.m., we received a call uh, from a worker on uh, 61st Avenue uh, at a company that adjourns the uh, Cumberland River that had been searching for uh, anything that would uh, pop up on the river, um, especially looking for Riley Strain if he would uh, surface here. As they were removing um, an object from the river, uh, they saw, they noticed uh, what appeared to be Riley Strain um, pop up. Uh, the fire department uh, was called in, um, retrieved the body from the river. Uh, the medical examiner's office uh, reviewed the body, and we've confirmed uh, that it is uh, Riley Strain. Uh, the family uh, has been contacted. Uh, there, it, there are no signs of foul play at this time, according to the examination here at the uh, riverbank. Uh, Mr. Strain still had the shirt on that he was wearing, uh, so had the watch and other identifying factors that helped us identify who he is. I want to say uh, to the family, uh, my heart and prayers go out to you all uh, for this very unfortunate and tragic uh, incident. I also want to say thank you to the Nashville community and the outpouring community of the outpouring support from the community uh, in trying to help us locate uh, Mr. Strain. I also want to say thank you to our USAR team and, and to the fire department and OEM and TWRA and everyone else, and including the media for everything that you've done for the countless tips that came in. Uh, we received nearly 200 tips as of yesterday that we were vetting out. Um, so at this time, the family has been notified uh, there would be an autopsy uh, more than likely sometime today. And, uh, and we'll have a little bit further uh, from that point. So thank you. 
Chief, can you tell us, is there any other additional evidence that, that points you to the theory that it seems like you've been going after for a while now? It's just that he fell into the river you know, accidentally? Yeah, there's no other evidence that suggests anything other than uh, we have reports that uh, normally uh, under these circumstances with, with his height and weight that he could have surfaced between 14 and 20 days. Uh, this is the 14th day, uh, so we were uh, really expecting uh, anytime soon to, uh, to find him. In fact, our search teams was going to put in in the water here uh, this morning and then search from this point further down. Uh, so uh, we were in the right spot. It's just unfortunate. But there's nothing to suggest anything other than any foul play at all. You say the police were crews that were actually looking for him that found him? Yes. That's, uh, so the workers typically on the river, whether it's barge companies, concrete companies, other businesses that actually are on the river, and they, uh, they look routinely. It's, it's happened countless times before. And as they moved, I believe, a barge, and don't quote me on that, they removed something from the river, and as they moved it, they noticed uh, Mr. Strain so, and, ca and called it in. Typically mm -hmm. work on the water. They weren't necessarily search crews. Right, right, okay. right, yeah. Okay. okay, thank you all. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hey, Chief, and so that was Chief Drake there addressing the media this morning after heartbreaking developments in the search for missing 22-year-old college senior Riley Strain. We can't confirm the body was pulled from the Cumberland River this morning. Chief Drake answering questions from the media this morning, giving us an update on the case. A couple things I want to note from the press conference that Chief Drake mentioned. Right now, there is no sign of foul play. In fact, he mentioned now getting shirt that he was last seen wearing when he disappeared in downtown Nashville that night. Chief Drake addressing the media, saying that they want to thank the community. They received over 200 tips uh, when it comes to uh, any information that could have led to finding Riley Strain. Uh, the family has been notified in terms of uh, where this kind of whole thing is and, and the timeline of it all. Today marks day 14. They were expecting if, if he was in the river, a body to uh, be found 14 to 20 days. Uh, and today, obviously, marking day 14 since his disappearance in downtown Nashville. Typically how this works, Chief Drake was saying, uh, as, these, as these workers move up and down the river, they move these barges. That could begin to kind of move the water in a particular direction to get debris to surface to the top. And so a worker was uh, called in. A body was found around 7.30 this morning. And uh, to catch you up to speed, heartbreaking development here in this case. As Metro Police confirmed, the body of 22-year-old college uh, senior Riley Strain has been recovered here in downtown Nashville. Obviously, this has been uh, a massive uh, nationwide story, gaining attention from everywhere on social media as more and more people flocked down here to Nashville to hopefully uh, bring this family some closure. So obviously, our thoughts are with the family this morning. We will, of course, stay on top of this story as we continue to learn more. And any new updates, we will pass that along to you at WKRN.com. We thank you for trusting News too. Okay, so I'm going to stay with this because apparently there is going to be um, another release. Oh, there is going to be another news release regarding this. So as soon as that pops up, or if one of you guys hear about this popping up, let me know. Um, let me just check over here because there's a few things I want to talk about on this. Okay, so hang on a sec. Okay, so I guess that was the press release on it. Now, from what I get, you guys, like they're saying... Right now, there's no foul play. Um, they feel like he just fell in the river. Um, I, I don't think that that is what happened. And there's many reasons why I think that. Um, there was new information that had come out that I was planning on. I was getting a live and everything ready to do on this case today. And I was going to do a live read on it. Um, because I got some stuff this morning when I was pulling my cards. Like you guys know, I pull cards every morning. Um, but the new stuff that had came out yesterday, for those who may not have heard it, was there was a couple that seen him when he was still down at Church and Bay before he took that turn, like he or he had just taken that turn to come down Beach uh, 
Gay Street, where that's where these two bridges were, were on Gay Street. That's where that rail was with the edge on the other side, right? Now, this couple had said that they seen him leaning over that area, which was way farther up before the police video. Um, so it would have been when he just turned on to Gay, to Gay Street from Church Street. And he was throwing up. And I guess they stopped and they asked him, like, hey, are you okay? And he said, yeah, yeah, I'll be fine, whatever. And they watched him for a bit. And then they watched him walking um, down Gay Street. Now, the next time he's caught by anyone or seen by anybody is the police video, right? So in between that, this couple is watching him walk away. And they said he seemed to be doing a little better and walking okay and whatever. The next time we see him is on the police video. Now, I've watched that whole segment of the police video. <clears throat> I also went to maps with you guys, and I showed you how there was different levels. So it's not just a complete drop right down into the water. There, He would have fell if he went over there, because in the police video, we see him on the police video. We see the interaction with the cop. After he, he's done that little interaction with the cop, we hear him say something to somebody else. To me, it sounded something like party. Um, a lot of people, especially some in my uh, comment sections, have said that they heard something about park. I heard something that started with a P. So whether it be party, park, whatever that was. But I heard him say something else as if he was talking to somebody else. Okay. So... The cop's walking like in the direction that Riley had came from. Then he turns around and he goes back. Riley's nowhere to be seen. Okay. So the next that we heard is uh, yesterday is that there was people that seen him at that second bridge. But when he turned, when the cop turns around, we don't see him. So what I think is he went over that first, like the wall right there. And there's a landing at about maybe three feet down. Okay. Okay two and a half, three feet down. There's an area there because you see where people had either set up a little encampment or whatever. And then if you keep going towards the river, there's another drop. And then you see another big clearing where people had tents and everything all set up, right? And then from there, if you go, continue to go towards the river, there's a drop down, but it's so there's so many trees and everything else. And then there's big boulders at the bottom where even if he would have got down that far and then fell, he would have been caught up at the boulders at the end, like along the water line there, right? So, but then we get information yesterday, late last night that I got it, was that somebody, he was seen at the second bridge. So the only way that he could get there and not be seen on the cameras is if he went over on one of them ledges, he went under the first bridge, walked over maybe to the second bridge, encountered more people there. And that's where his bank card was found, was at that second bridge, right? So at first I'm thinking, okay, maybe when he, because somebody at that first homeless camp, the first before the first bridge said that there was a commotion. And that two other people yelled, don't worry about it. He's all right. He's just drunk. So there was people with him. If he would have just fell into the river, people would have seen him. Right? Follow along here. And I want to know what you guys think. Somebody, two people said, whether they were a couple or just two friends or whatever, of people that lived there, whatever, they said to the other person, hey, you know, they said, somebody said, what's wrong with him? And they just said, well, he's all right. He's just drunk. So there was two people with him. So if they continued along that first ledge or even that second ledge where all the tents were under that first bridge going over towards the second bridge, because in the maps, I clearly showed you there were different levels there. Um, did they try and coerce him into, hey, you know, you got money. Is that why he pulled out his bank card? Because we know from his mom that that bank card wouldn't just fall out of his pocket. It was in a sleeved case that his mom gave him, like that protects the magnetic strip or whatever. And it, they're tight. They're pretty tight in there, right? So do you then pull out his bank card and say, yeah, okay, I can get money or, or whatever. And they decide <laughs> they're just going to push him in because there was people with him. There were people there, even if they weren't directly right there, they would have heard the splash of him going in the water. Somebody would have heard something. And that's why I say, 
they, you know, he may not have a cut on his face or a bloody nose. There's no bodily damage if you're just pushed into that river, right? I feel there was a reason there's still unanswered questions. Why did he have that bank card out? The bank card was, was found. It wasn't dirty. If it had been out there in the elements, it had rained and everything. If it had been out there in the elements, it would have been dirty and rained on and whatever. Somebody had that bank card. And if they snatched the bank card thinking they're just going to take his money, thinking maybe it's a credit card, whatever, they don't need a pin. They're just going to take his money and push him in because he was so drunk. You know what I mean? Somebody would have heard that splash there. There's a lot of homeless people there, right? Somebody would have heard it. Where they found that bank card, if they're going to say that's where he went in, somebody, one of the homeless people would have heard him unless it was done intentionally and it's being covered up. That's my opinion. And I get it. There's there's no signs of foul play because he didn't have a bloody nose. He didn't, you know, like stuff like that. Like if he was beaten up or something, that would have shown. But it doesn't take nothing to push a drunk person into the water. Now, this dispels all the other rumors. He was found in that shirt, right? So this woman that apparently was saying that she was giving food to the homeless and she seen somebody wearing that shirt. Well, he had that shirt on and he had his Apple watch on. They haven't said nothing about his phone and the little wallet thing, right? That that card would have been in. If they find that, that wallet on him also, there's something going on here. He pulled out that car for card for a reason. And like I said, I believe that people in that area, the homeless people in that area would have heard a splash if he just fell in. Just pushing somebody in isn't going to show any signs of foul play either. So this may be a case, you guys, that they just washed their hands. It's an accident. He fell in the river. But there's still so much that's unexplained, if that's the case. Why was the bank card found on the bank? You know, and then if they did push him in, he'd probably be yelling and screaming for a bit until he, he, he drowned. People would have heard him, right? So is there a cover up there between the homeless people? You know what I mean? The thing that, that's getting me is the bank card. Then they're thinking, oh, shit, it's a bank card. We need the PIN number. So they just chuck it. It's no good to them without the PIN number. What do you guys think? Let me know. Let me go through some of these comments here. Yeah, a lot of people are still thinking there's there's some things that haven't been answered here. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely, Jasmine. And welcome everybody coming in. Thanks for coming in. They said that he had the stuff on that he went missing in. The shirt, the jeans, I'm assuming his boots, uh, his Apple Watch. I think they took his bank card. I think he thought he was going to go to a bank machine or go get some alcohol or, or something for them. Maybe they offered him a place to stay, but they wanted money. He took that bank card out for a reason. So I'm anxious to hear if they found his wallet too. I don't know if it was so much a prank. I think they wanted his money. Um, that came out in my read. I felt like he was being robbed. Um, they haven't said nothing about his phone. Vanessa thinks foul probably. But if he slipped on something during 11, I think they would have heard him go in the water. And don't forget, there was two people that said, don't worry about him. He's just drunk. He was with two people. Why didn't anybody say anything? Um, I think it was now how they found him. It was it wasn't search parties. It was people that worked on the river, like on the barges and stuff. They moved something and his body popped up. Yeah, he had that shirt still on. So whoever said somebody else was wearing his shirt, that was wrong. He did have his watch on. 
Yeah, things aren't fitting. Things aren't fitting. Well, he had his Apple Watch on, Vanessa. They they said that he had his Apple Watch on. Correct. Yes, his Apple's Apple Watch was on. They haven't said anything about his phone. Right. We want to know where his wallet is. Did they find his wallet too? If they found his wallet still in his pocket, how did that bank card get out of it? Right. I still think there's something going on. Oh, yeah. Rose. Hi, Rose. I hope you're feeling good, honey. I love you to the moon and back. I agree to disagree with respect, truly. I agree to disagree with what? I don't think the bar had anything to do with it. I really don't think the bar had anything to do with it. <laughs> I mean, could the bar have done more? They could have called a maneuver to take him home because he was from out of town to take him to the motel so he didn't get lost. Um but other than that, I don't think the bar had anything to do with, with what the, you know, with his demise. Could they have done more? Yes. But I don't think that they ever thought in a million years that this would happen to him or did they have anything to do with what happened to him? Um, apparently Rose, he went after he got thrown out of um, Luke Bryan's he went across the street to another bar where he was refused service. Yeah, I think I think that if he fell in the river there, those homeless people would have heard it. And why didn't they say anything? Yeah, unfortunately, we may never know. Because if they just, like, gave him a shove, and being that he was still drunk uh, and couldn't get out of the water, there'd be no injury on his body. It wouldn't be like he was beaten up and all that stuff, right? But I still want to know why that card was out of his wallet and why it was clean if it had been sitting out there for eight, nine days. Hello, Marie. Oh, yeah, there is so much more to this, I think. Celine Elder, hello and welcome. I, I, I just can't get past, especially if they find his wallet thing in his pocket. How did that bank card and why did he take, why would you take the bank card out of your pocket? It didn't look like he had it in his hands walking. So why would you take it out at that point? If they're trying to say he took it out, there was two people with him that said to somebody else, don't worry about him. He's just drunk because he was puking, right? I don't know. I don't know. It kind of bothers me. Um, where's Nana? Where we go, when we go all. You never leave a friend behind. Never, 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 never. One of those friends should have went with him and made sure he got back to the motel safely. Yeah, his parents, uh, Dossie Du says, my boyfriend has a wallet like that. It's a Ridge or Esker wallet, very hard to get into. Yes, and that's what his mom had said, right? That she had given him one of these wallets and it was really hard to get your cards out. So it didn't just slip out. Um, Dossie Du, thank you for that. Yeah, very high profile because most of the bars around there are named after country singers, right? No, he was found eight miles down the river. The card, his bank card was found by the bridges under the second bridge. 
Sandy Hill says, heartbroken for the family, especially his poor mama. I just knew he was going to be found. Yeah. Rest in peace and prayers to his mama. Her, seeing her in the last um, release was just heartbreaking. Nope, not by his card at all. It was found eight miles down the river. Yeah, we don't know. Um, Rose, they haven't said yet if um, his wallet was on him. So I'm anxious to hear that. I'm very anxious to hear that. I don't know. It seems that there was two people with him. Um, at telling other people, don't worry about him. He's fine. He's just drunk. And then that bank card comes out, right? I'm stuck at that bank card, you guys. Okay, thank you, Marie. Yeah, if he would have went in the river there, somebody would have heard him, especially the two people that were kind of standing up for him and protecting him a bit. I'm way behind in comments, you guys, so please bear with me. Um they would have heard him go in there or seen him or something. There's something up. There's something up. Yeah, they've said no place in the file. Right. But even having his body, you're not going to leave a mark on somebody just giving them a shove and a help into that river. Right. Why was his bank card out? Why was he down that far? How did his bank card get there? I'm sure he didn't throw it, so he had to have been down in that area unless it was taken from him. And if it was taken from him, what did they do with Riley after they took his bank card? You know what I mean? There's still so many unanswered questions. T, why does everybody go to SA? No, they said there was no nothing on his body that would suggest foul play now that doesn't mean that he wasn't given a shove that wouldn't leave a mark on him punching him in the mouth or, or beating him up would leave marks but just giving somebody a little shove isn't going to leave any marks right yeah and um we had somebody just comment a few minutes ago, Dacia Du. Um, her boyfriend has one of these wallets. It's very hard to get your card out of it. So I'm anxious to hear if that wallet was found with him. It's going to be very interesting, you guys. And if it was found on him, then we've got a problem. Miss Always Right, Ryan. Thank you so much for your donation. I appreciate it beyond words. Miss Always Right Ryan says, I think there is lots more to it and they're trying to cover, brush it off so tourists continue to come. They don't want people afraid to visit. Thank you so much for that, Miss Always Right Ryan. <laughs> yeah, um, Teresa says, if it was in his shirt pocket, after going to the second bar, did he put it in his shirt pocket? If it did, it would have come out of his pocket one of the times that he fell or leaned over and was puking. And because that, that pocket is pretty high up on the chest, right? Or in the fall, if they're going to say he fall, he fell down, it would have came out. And why was it clean? After eight days of being out there, why was it clean? Did they realize that it was useless to them because they didn't have the pin number, so they just tossed it? Okay, Mitch seems to think he just had it in his shirt pocket. If that was so and he just fell, it would have came out, right? Those people may have taken it out. Yes, they could have. I think there's more to it, and it's, it's going to surround that bank card. There's a reason that bank card was taken out. If it was still in that wallet and that wallet has been found on him, how did it get out of the wallet? There's a question there. How did then how did it get to the bank? How was it still clean eight days later after he went missing eight days later is when it was found eight or nine days later? How was it still clean as if it was just put there? You know what I mean? There's still a lot there. 
uh, the police are saying no foul play because there's like if he would have gotten beaten up or, or smacked in the back of the head with something, you know, there would have been bruising or, or or marks or a broken nose or a broken tooth or a broken lip or, you know, cuts on him. So they're saying he wasn't beat up, obviously, because there's no signs. But to just give somebody a little shove into the water isn't going to leave a mark on them, right? So it's I don't know how they can still say it. Like, there's no signs of foul play, they said. That doesn't mean that there isn't foul play involved. They said no signs of foul play. So I think that this is going to be, if they do this investigation properly, there's going to be a lot of questions that need to be answered here. How did that bank card get out of the wallet if he still has his wallet on him? If he doesn't have that wallet on him, where is the rest of that wallet? It, does he have his phone on him? We know he has his Apple Watch. Where's his phone? The, those are all going to be telltale signs. Where's the phone? Marie Burks, please do not put your name. Remove that, please. Remove that number. Do not put numbers in your phone numbers in the chat, you guys. I'm going to suck you guys. Thank you, Marie. Do not put your phone numbers in the chat. Very dangerous stuff to do with that. Kathy says they did say his Apple Watch was on him. An Apple Watch, um, they know, could be traced and stuff. They, the, A bank card, you know what I mean? Were they trying to get him to go and get money out? I don't know. We don't know. There's a lot of unknowns here. Thank you again, Miss Always Right Ryan. Um, Kathy Knapp, oh, good. He had his wallet. No, we don't know that. They have not said whether he had his wallet on him or not. They said he was wearing the clothes that he was in, which means the shirt. They did specifically say that shirt. He was wearing his the clothes that he was last seen in, which means the shirt, the pants, the boots. We can clearly see he had his Apple Watch on in that police video. They also just confirmed he still had his Apple Watch on. They have said nothing about his phone or his wallet. So that's where I'm at is this bank card is really still eating at me. I want to know, did they, did he have his wallet and his phone? Uh, we just listened to the press conference, Pinky. I don't believe that there is another one. We just listened to the, the police conference there that was released, the news that was released. I can go and check and see if there's anything else that's being released. Let me just go and check here. Who's a smoky garage girl? He was found eight miles down river, down the Cumberland River from those bridges. Okay, let me just check somewhere else here, you guys. <sighs> Rose, thank you so much. Thank you so, so much. Okay, let me just see here.
So they will be doing an autopsy on him and they will do the toxicology and all that. Um, to see what his levels were. Okay, let me just hang on a sec. So apparently from what the family is saying that um, Riley didn't think of anybody as strangers, that he would walk up and talk to anybody. He was just like full of life and energetic um, and that he loved everybody and he didn't care who you were or what kind of group you were or, you know, if you were rich, if you were poor, if you were an alien, he didn't care. He was just overall friendly and that could have been his demise, right? Okay, I'm just trying to find the latest here. So the medical examiner's van um, was there until 11 a.m. So from 7.30 a.m. when they found him, um, the medical examiner didn't take him away till 11 o'clock. So I'm sure that they were searching that whole scene where he was found. I'm just going through to see if there's going to be another update. Um, <laughs> so here is the news to date. Around 7.28 a.m., a worker discovered the body when removing an object from the river, the body surfaced. And don't forget, we know that they were burping the river also. If you guys know what that means, when they, they burp the river, so stuff from the bottom floats up. The fire department are the ones who retrieved the body. The medical examiner reviewed the body, confirmed to be Riley Strain. Family was contacted. Um, they're saying that there was no signs of foul play at this time. Uh, Strain still had his shirt watch that he was wearing at the time he went missing. The autopsy is going to be uh, performed today. So that's the latest information that has come out. Um, let me just go over here and see if there is going to be another news conference. So I guess that what we just seen at the beginning, the police talking and giving the information, I guess that was the news conference. The family may decide to talk later down the line. Um, I'm not so sure about that, but they may. Um, the real angel girl, we do not know about the phone or the wallet yet. And like I just said in this one news article I just read from News Nation is they said that the police said no signs of foul play at this time. So that tells me exactly what I've been just saying to you guys, they're still going to be investigating because there's still unanswered questions. Did he have his wallet? We don't know. Did he have his phone? We don't know. Why was his bank card out? We don't know. Is there anybody else that maybe has come forward or is going to come forward? We don't know. Um, we know that we don't always get all the information that police have. Again, thank you so, so much, Rose, for your super chat. I appreciate it. The autopsy will tell a lot. Absolutely. Let me just go over here. I'm trying to get all the information that I can for you guys to see if any of these are going to let me know if they found his wallet. 
Okay, let's go over here. Okay, so in the news article from CNN, it says the medical examiner's office confirmed it was strain and Drake said Drake, adding that a shirt, a watch and other identifying factors. So did he have a tattoo? Um, did he have, we know he didn't have braces on his teeth, but that would be another identifying factor like braces on the teeth. But there was some other identifying factors what were those? We don't know. Um, it could be a tattoo, something as simple as a tattoo with, his, you know, his, his birth date or, you know, whatever. We don't know. It could be his wallet. We don't know. An autopsy is pending, this one says. So we got a little bit more information there that they that's not all they found on him. Um, it says the body was recovered from the... Um, Cumberland River, about eight miles from downtown. Um, they said that the police had planned to search the area today. But the police aren't the ones that found it. It was people who worked on the river are the ones who found his body. Okay, so we know that his mom and stepdad <coughs> got to see extended video coverage from inside the bar. Do you remember the bar had put out a statement saying that nobody in his group had owed any kind of bar tab or whatever? Well, the stepfather, Chris, has come out and said that when he watched that video um, from Luke's bar when he was asked to leave because he, he was overserved. Um, he said that he was trying to pay his tab. There you go. So I guess in that video, it shows him trying to pay his tab. That's what the stepfather says of Chris said that he was trying to pay his tab. And see, the, that officer was in the area for another 45 minutes after the encounter with Riley. So if Riley would have fell into that river, he would have hurt him. I would assume. So I guess the State Alcohol and Gaming Commission is investigating... It says uh, State Alcohol Commission investigating. Uh, Brian said in an Instagram post last week that he was praying for Strain's safe return. So that's Luke Bryan, right? Luke's 32 Bridge told CNN in a statement that Strain was served one alcoholic drink and two waters during his time at the bar. At 938, our security team made a decision based on our conduct standards to escort him from the venue through our Broadway exit at the front of our building. The statement read, adding that Strain was followed down the stairs by a member of his party who did not leave the bar and returned upstairs. Um, there are no specific rules or statutes that governs escorting out intoxicated patrons from their businesses or providing assistance in getting someone home. Aaron Rumbage, the commission's director of legislation, policy and communication, said in the statement. So I guess they're not... Um, there's no rule saying that they had to call him an Uber. That's what this guy from the um, director of legislation, policy and communication said. However, state law prohibits serving alcoholic beverages to someone who is visibly intoxicated. A violation is a class A misdemeanor. The TABC has opened an investigation into this matter to see if any violations have occurred at Luke's bar.
So that's a little bit more information there, you guys. That was just put out an hour ago. Um, let's see what this one says. We're trying to see if we can get any information from any of these, um, this information that's been put out to see if we can find out if he had his wallet and his phone, right? So that's what I'm, sc I'm scanning through every news article that I can get on, on a certain platform. I have somebody else's login information. Um, so I can see some of this stuff with their VPN. It's a VPN thing. So anything that I can find, I'm scanning you guys to see if we can see anybody saying that the wallet and phone was found. Okay, so you see, amid the search, Drain's bank card was found near Cumberland River and Gray Street on March 17th. So that's like nine days after he went missing. Yet that bank card was squeaky clean. If it had been out in the elements for eight, nine days, it would have been dirty. Because it had rained and everything. There's a lot of dirt and mud and everything. And people walk and... So, and apparently while he was walking around intoxicated, he sent a text message to his girlfriend that said, good lops, L-O-P-S. I don't know what that means. Good lops. And the girlfriend was unsure what that meant. So he sent her a text message while he was walking around. Let me see. And don't forget, I got that information last night, you guys, where there was a couple that had seen him leaning over down at Church and Gay, which is way before the bridges, throwing up, right? And in the police video, we see him walking towards the officer and he says, hello. And the cop says, hi, how are you? He says, I'm good, thanks. How are you? And he continued walking. And then when the officer turned around, he was gone. I think he went over the railing there. And if he went over the railing anywhere, before that first bridge, there is like a three, a three foot drop. And then there's a big, huge clearing there because it looks like people were camping there at one time because it was full of um, garbage and boots and, and crates and this and that. He wouldn't have made it down because I think they said that there was 12 feet before the next drop off. He would have just fell right there. And if he would have got up and staggered more towards the river, he would have fallen on somebody's tent because the next level of clearing is where they had all their tents set up. Lops means lots of permission. Lots of permission. I don't know. Because it's L-O-P-S. Yeah, it could mean he could have been trying to say laugh out loud. There's lots of love. Like he's drunk, right? Good or good times or something. And it, we know sometimes autocorrect, but lops doesn't make much sense. Yeah, but he said good. So good, low on power, S, I don't know. They asked the girlfriend if she knew what that meant, and she didn't know. It could have, yeah, he could have tried to put lots. Could have meant anything because the, the word good came out. Good, lots. But you know, yeah, exactly, uh, Doss, you do. You know drunk texting, right? Let's see what uh, this one here is saying.
Okay, so on Twitter, police said no foul play related trauma was observed. So which means he wasn't, he didn't have the 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 SIHT kicked out of him. So that's very important. If the police said no foul play related trauma was observed, that still doesn't mean that somebody didn't push him in the river. Just like sneaking up behind him and pushing him in. You know what I mean? Like maybe, okay, we're going to go and, and get money out of the bank for you guys. And you guys can take care of me, whatever. We can get some more beer. Yeah, let's have some more drinks. You guys can let me crash here for a bit to sober up. I'm lost, whatever. And then he said, ah, nah, I can get back to my motel. And so they said, well, the hell are you? They grab the bank card and push him in. Like that's not going to leave any trauma on his body, right? Pushing somebody in is not going to leave trauma. So the wording is, yes, everything. The wording is everything. So they say this morning at around 7.28 a.m., we received a call from a worker on 61st Avenue. 61st Avenue at a company that adjoins the Cumberland River that had been searching for anything that would pop up on the river, especially looking for Riley Strain. Metro Nashville Police Department Chief John Drake said during a Friday morning press conference, as they were removing an object from the river, they noticed what appeared to be Riley Strain. So he was found at 61st Avenue. Let's go. Anybody want to, you want me to go to maps? You want me to go and see where this is, you guys? Want me to go to maps? Let's go to maps. Let's pull up the maps. Let's go see where this is. I'm going to pull this up and... Um, We're going to pull this up. Let me just, uh, come on. File, open the file of Riley. Okay, let me share this with you, you guys. Okay. So here's Luke's bar. This is where his motel was. He should have went this way and he didn't. When he came out, he went the wrong way and turned. So he probably figured that he was walking all this walk down Broadway because he was put out on Broadway. He went left instead of turning right. So he knows the walk there was probably a good walk. So as he's walking down here, he thinks he's going in the right direction and he's not. Because his motel was over here. So he knew it was a long walk down and then he had to turn. Well, here, he would have come out of the motel and turned left. So when he left, he, he came out the wrong way and turned left. And he th th it was a big mistake. So let's find um, 61st uh, Street. Let's see where that is. Nope. That's way over there. That's not the one we're looking for. Uh, he was found eight miles down river. Which way is down river? Because what did they say? Sixty first Avenue that joins the Cumberland River. 61st Avenue. Oh, that's way down here. Oh boy. But it joins the Cumberland right here. This is 61st, so this, this is it.
Here, let me just mark it so we don't lose it, you guys. Okay, so this is where he was found. Um, this is Lafarge, North America. Did they mention that? They said that um, they got a call from a worker on 61st Avenue at a company that adjoins the Cumberland River uh, that they had been searching for anything that would pop up on the river, especially for Ryan. Um, so they had moved something here. So we can see, like, they have barges and everything here, right? Let's get rid of this. That's pretty steep. Like, it looks like they got a walkway or something that comes down here. Um, so they move something. I'm assuming it's this company here, Lafarge North America. Um, because I don't see any of these other businesses. This is 61st Avenue here. I don't see any, unless it's this here, Lender Industries, because it looks like they have some kind of stairs or something coming down here to the river. But I'm assuming that it's this one, but it was this area. So let's see. Let's follow it backwards. So he came all the way down this way and around, and they found him over here. Wow, that's a long way, you guys. That's a long way. Let's see what he would have had to get through here. Now, did he go in there? Did they take him further down somewhere? We don't know. We don't know where he went in. And this is what I mean, you guys. See the different levels here? There's a level that goes along here. There used to be a building here. And then you can clearly see there's another level here before the final drop off into the water with these huge rocks and that. There's another level here that this building is sitting on. So there's a ledge here. There's a ledge up here. So he would have maybe gone over this one. Let's go back to where he was seen with the cop. He probably went over that first ledge, maybe even down to this second ledge, and then walked underneath here with somebody maybe. Let's go under here. We'll take you to a bank machine. Go get us some money. His bank card was found over here. And as we can see, there is a level here. See that? That's the bottom of the building. So there is a level here before this final drop-off. When you first go in the water, when you first drown, you sink. And usually within three to four days, you pop back up because of the gases in your body. Um, and then you sink again. And you usually are found, in, unless there's a huge current, you would be found where you finally sink for the second time. So he would have had to get all through here. Let's take a... Let's take a run down this river, you guys. He would have had to get all through this. Around this stuff. So all around this. And there's these inlets too, right? Like if his body floated, why didn't he go down this dam area here? You know what I mean? How did he get way past this? Because the water is going down here. That's like a, a dam sort of like thing going down. If his body was just floating, it would have been pulled through there. So I think he could have been pushed in further down. Like, could they have said, come on, we're going to go to a bank machine. See like the different levels here, you guys? The same as back up by the, the bridges. See? There's different levels. It's not just this uh, one drop down from that ledge. It doesn't just suddenly drop straight down. There's a level, there's a level, and then a steep drop. But if he had gone in, that's what I'm looking for, you guys. If he would have gone in, over here, he would have gone in 
he would have got caught up or pulled into that little dam area. You know what I mean? Let's just look along the banks here. Like there's so much he could have got caught on here. People <clears throat> could have seen him. This looks like apartment condos floating because after three days, your body pops up. Your body pops up. So if he goes in here, he drowns, you automatically sink. The river current's going this way. You sink. Within three days, because of the gases and everything, you're going to pop up. He would have popped up somewhere along, I would say, to here. Maybe even a little bit farther. Why didn't he get stuck up here? Why didn't he get caught up here? Look at the trees and everything. There's a barge, an old barge. That it looks like they just use for whatever. There's other things like this. Why didn't he get caught up here? We're going to follow this down to where he was finally found. Um, there was also a spot back here where his body would have got sucked in to this dam. If he had just been floating, because there's water flow down here and under. Right? Yeah, but I'm saying even like even for the first three days. He would have been sucked into this because the water goes down and over this, right? Why did he get stuck in there if he went in there? What's that? Like, it looks like there's trees and branches. Like, why didn't he get caught up on any of this? Like, there's a lot of it, it seems. There's another barge here. It looks like stuff under the water here. Why didn't he get caught up on any of this? See, look at here. You can see. The different levels. But I want to look along the edge here. There's so much. He get, we're looking at how far he would have had to float down, you guys. We're still going. We're not there yet. Look at, <clears throat> there's all this stuff too he could have got caught up on. And what I'm asking, why I'm thinking this is why we're still not there yet. Look at you guys. He had to go around this band and around. Look at all the stuff, including a little island, more barges here, more stuff in the water here. And if he was floating, look at all the stuff here, you guys, that he could have got caught up on. And we're still not even there yet where he was found. So I don't think he went in where they think he went in. Okay, here's another bridge. Look at. Why didn't he get caught up in any of these things? And the reason I'm asking that, you guys, is if the reason they found him is because he got caught up on stuff, why didn't he get caught up on any of this other stuff? Tons and tons and probably tons more that we can't see, right? Tons more that we can't even see. And look at, we're not even there yet, you guys. Look at, this is where he would, they say he went in. We're only here. We're halfway to where he was found. He wasn't found all the way to over here. Look at all of the stuff that's in this water, even on both sides. Why didn't he get caught up here? Look at all this stuff that he could have got caught up on. Why? Where? Look, look at all this. Little inlets. Why here? Why all the way 
down here before he finally gets caught up. Let's look. Let's look what's around here. Pretty desolate area. It looks like um, a lot of these businesses, this is all like all kinds of businesses here that at this time of the night would have been shut down. Raw material places, oil places, it looks like. All these businesses that would have been shut down at that time of night. Right? There's condos here. Where's the closest liquor store? Did they say, okay, let's go to the liquor store? Did they somebody have a car? And then he refused to do it. So was he dumped somewhere else? Because I find it hard to believe that he could get past all this other stuff <coughs> and be found here. All these right here alone, getting zipping through here along the bank. Why didn't he get caught up here? Why didn't he get caught up here with all the, the brush and everything? That's a long way for a body to go with this much stuff in the river. And look at even places like this here. This is just another one. There's hundreds of these all along this side of the river where he was found. Why didn't he get caught up here? Look at this, you guys. Which tells me I think he was dumped somewhere else. Further down. I don't know. I don't think. And then, you know, did were they going to take him somewhere to go get liquor or money or I don't know. And then he said, well, no, forget it. I'm too drunk. Just take me to my motel, my motel. Did they offer to take him to the motel and then find out that, oops, that's not what he's doing. And did they take him to a bank machine trying to get him to get money out of the bank? And he, he refused. So they just took him to the closest place. Did they dump him in down here somewhere? And he got around. And then go back and dispose of his bank card here. So it looks like he fell in there. Because that's where they found him, right? Like, that's where the homeless people seen him. That's where his bank card was found. So did they screw this, go back, let's just dump his bank card? Did they try and take his bank card from him, try to use it themselves and it wouldn't, they couldn't get it? So they just went back here and dumped it there because that's where he was last seen. Because we know that bank card was not dirty. It was perfectly clean when it was found. So there, I, I feel finding way over here, yes, he would go down river. If he was in the river, but how would he get past all these hundreds and hundreds of other things that he could have got caught up with unless he was tossed in somewhere else? So I think there's going to be more that's going to come of this. I don't think um, he just fell in. I think he was pushed. So with that being said, you guys, I'm going to wrap it up. Um, I've got an appointment I've got to get to, but I've seen this come up. Um, so I figured I would jump on and bring it to you guys. Let, I'm going to keep my eyes on things. If I do find out anything else, keep an eye. Make sure you subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. It's right down here on your screen. Down below, hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Give the video a like. Um, and... If I find out anything else, as soon as I do, even if I'm out at my appointment, I can jump on my phone and post it to my community tab. And when I get home, I will jump on and bring it to you guys live. So with that being said, thank you, Mods, for being here. I appreciate you guys. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for your support. Set. Thank you for your super chats, super stickers. For those who do go over and give me um, donations and PayPal, thank you very much. I usually uh, check that maybe once or twice a week. And then I will thank you in a video for all of those that donate through PayPal. I just did a thank you on one of my last videos for those who have donated over there. I do appreciate it very, very, very much. It keeps uh, me going, keeps the channel going here. So I appreciate it. 
every little bit helps. So thank you. Um, thank you guys for being here and watching here. Like I said, if there's anything else, I will jump on and bring it to you. There's a lot going on in the Madeline Soto case. Um, we'll see there. Maybe I'll do something on that tomorrow um, or even maybe later tonight. I don't know. So make sure you're subscribed. Hit that subscribe to notification bell. Hit the like, please, on your way out. Let's get the video out there. It helps the channel. It's free to do. And I appreciate it very, very, very much. So with that being said, you guys, please take care of yourselves. Please stay safe. Always be aware of your surroundings and never leave a friend behind ever, ever. Be a good friend. Look what happened to Riley. This could have been prevented by just being a good friend. So with that being said, I love you guys to the moon and back. Take care. Bye-bye for now.